This is a group of high school seniors who are in a hurry to keep up with the clock by gulping down food and studying first. Under China's current social structure, it is difficult for people from the lower class to enter the upper class of society. For most children from the lower class, going to college is the most important way to change their destiny. China's college entrance exam system, on the surface, uses test scores to determine whether or not a student qualifies for college. However, this seemingly fair system is fraught with uncertainty for the less powerful, especially children from rural areas, due to corruption in admissions and impersonation by the privileged class. Chen Chuan Xiu, a woman from a farming family in Shandong, China, took the college entrance exam 16 years ago, but did not receive a letter of admission from any school. By chance, she was filling in her personal information in May this year when she discovered her name in a stranger's photo on an official website. The government website indicated that she had enrolled and graduated from a prestigious university in Shandong province in 2004. This came as a shock to Chen. After making inquiries, she learned that her admission letter, which belonged to her 16 years ago, had been sent to another student in the same county, whose test scores were so low that they had no chance of going to university. The student's father had reportedly been a government official, who later went into business. The student took her place in university and became a government civil servant. Chen comes from a poor rural family and can only afford to send one child to high school. Since her studies were relatively good, her father decided to send her to high school to go to college. After her brother graduated from middle school, he stopped going to school and started working. Chen's father, when interviewed, said he was an old farmer and was useless, and that's why his daughter was replaced. <laughs> Sixteen years ago, Chen, who had no wealthy background, no special access or connections, accepted the reality that she was a failure and blamed herself for not working hard enough. She started working as a laborer and a waitress in a restaurant, and it wasn't until she became a kindergarten teacher that her family situation improved. In 2019, Chen's family's total annual income was $1,200 USD. China has a strict household registration and citizen record management system. It is almost impossible for an ordinary scammer to obtain someone else's ID or personal files. Under public pressure, the government authorities conducted an investigation involving 29 people, including the local village chief, the director of the admissions office, and the principal of Chen's school, as well as the head of the police station that manages the household register and other public officials. However, these people were only punished very lightly. Some had only been expelled from the party without any financial or legal penalty, while others had their retirement packages reduced, or their positions nominally lowered. In the case of the woman who replaced her, her academic qualification was nullified by the university and her employment contract was terminated by the work department. The investigation team said that the public security authorities would investigate the case and take compulsory measures against the woman and her father. However, no one knows the details and what the real situation is. The substitute student never contacted Chen after the incident and did not publicly apologize. Neither the government department nor the university offered Chen Chuan she owed any compensation and refused to give Chen a new chance to go to college. Chen was not satisfied with the outcome. She has taken to social media platforms to express her hope that the people involved will be brought to justice, but there was nothing she could do apart from gaining the sympathy of the society. <laughs> Right after the Chen impersonation scandal was exposed, a second case was revealed. In June this year, another woman told her story. This woman's name is Go Jing, and she was born in an ordinary rural family in Shandong province, and her family hoped she could pass the college entrance exam to change her fate. 
In China, after graduating from high school, students who pass the final national college entrance examination can enter three levels of post-secondary education, ranked from best to worst: university, college, and technical secondary schools. Since it is one of the most influential examinations in China, and students can only take the test once a year, the students undergo tremendous pressure in preparing for and taking the exam. Go Jing says she was the pride of the family because she got into the city's top high school class, Shandong Experimental High School, where she was in the top ten of her class. But in her two college entrance exams in 1997 and 1998, she only got a grade eligible for technical secondary schools, the lowest rank. There were more than 60 students in her class, and almost all of them went to university, with the second to last going to a junior college. She was the penultimate one in her class. In the end, she had to go to an undistinguished technical secondary school. The strange thing was, there were more than 40 students in her class, and only four of them were not from Shandong. In 2002, a rumor reached Go Jing's hometown that a girl with the same name as her from Shandong had returned for work after graduating from a prestigious school in Beijing, Management Kadar's Institute of Coal Industry, which was incorporated into China University of Mining and Technology in 1998. A few months before her sister took the college entrance exam, she received a letter from her homeroom teacher, Mr. Chiu, who told her that his daughter had replaced her at the university in Beijing in 1997. Go Jing's younger sister also studied in the same high school, and Mr. Chiu was one of the most powerful teachers in the high school. Go Jing fears that her sister will be subjected to the same illegal practices during her college entrance exams, and her family will lose its last hope. She chose to endure the bitter truth and kept it to herself. Most of Go's classmates, including eight with doctorate degrees and five professors, are already in the middle or even upper class of Chinese society. After losing the chance to go to university, Jing began to work hard and later became a manager of an e-commerce company through her own hard work. Because of her psychological pain, Jing has never been to class reunions. This year, after seeing Chen Chuan Xiu's story exposed, Go Jing decided to tell her own story and reported it to her class teacher. She didn't ask for compensation or an apology. She just wanted the society to give her the truth, so that the tragedy would not happen again. But afterwards, she encountered tremendous pressure. The class teacher led several large men to block the entrance of the business where she worked. Officials in her hometown accused her of bringing shame to Shandong Province, and her relatives accused her of dragging her family down with her. Go's story has triggered a storm of public opinion on the Chinese internet. In June, the Beijing News, a well-known Chinese media outlet, published an investigative report confirming Go's story. In July, relevant government authorities in Shandong Province released the results of their investigation. The investigation claimed that Go Jing's two college entrance exam results were both at the level of a junior college. The homeroom teacher's daughter went to a technical secondary school in Beijing on Go Jing's behalf, not the famous Chinese university, as rumored. The report claimed that 15 people had been dealt with according to the rules and regulations, with the vast majority receiving warnings as punishment. The technical secondary school at the center of the attention did not show evidence to the public of its students' enrollment, which raises the interesting question of why even would this powerful teacher go to such lengths to allow his daughter to attend a technical secondary school in place of the so-called worst student in the class? As a result, Go is in an even greater predicament. On the Chinese internet, all kinds of vicious attacks and curses were directed at her, claiming that she had exaggerated her own tragedy, fooling the public, and even calling for legal punishment of Gu Jing. There is hardly any article or discussion questioning whether the official investigation result is true. Many articles are praising the government for correcting mistakes when they find them. When an ordinary individual challenges the system, I already have a premonition of my own petty fate. Go Jing wrote at the end of her Weibo post on July 5th. Those who are awake don't need to be called on. Those who sleep don't wake up. And later that night, she reluctantly announced that she was quitting Weibo. Go Jing's incident seems to echo a popular Chinese saying: "If you can't solve the problem, solve the person who asked the question." Chinese media reported that from 2018 to 2019, 14 junior colleges in Shandong Province had 242 people suspected of impersonating others to attend university. Some Chinese netizens reported more than 1,000 incidents of college entrance exam impersonation in one county in Jiangsu alone. Hu Jai, a Beijing-based rights activist, said in an interview with the Voice of America that the tragedies that have come to light are few and far between, just the tip of the iceberg, with only a few floating on the surface and most underwater. 
Under China's strict household registration system, to be able to go to university in place of a student is tantamount to a gang crime, as many bargains have to be formed. Under the Communist Party system, this kind of impersonation can go smoothly, as long as you have enough money and the right connections or family background, the relevant departments and personnel will coordinate accordingly. When those who are in a weaker position seek help from the system, they are usually met with rejection and denial. In the age of technology, the internet may help victims, but it can also devour them. They may discover the truth or suffer even more persecution for the rest of their lives. Thank you for listening. These videos are a result of many people's work. If you like our work, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the conversation, please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks again, and take care.